welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast and I have an amazing story to share with you all today because Marla Tejwani from Datastax is going to be joining me to share her story and boy does she have a great story. She was an, a world champion in Indian classical dance at age 15. Her career started at a young age and led her to conquer all corners of the dance world from being a choreographer on So You Think You Can Dance to a Cirque du Soleil performer. But yes, this is a tech podcast, so I want to learn more about the lessons she took from dance and how it led her to forge her own path in technology, starting an entry-level role at Google and eventually leading to operations at Datastax and helping the company navigate through periods of significant activity and growth. It's a great story, this one. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to California, where Marla is waiting to share her story. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Marla. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. My name is Lala Tijuani. I uh, I grew up in uh, in in California, um, in in the in the United States, and um, I uh, I studied at UCLA. And you know, Neil, like I always thought I would go to law school and you know be a kick ass courtroom attorney. But you know that didn't that didn't quite happen. I, uh, I I through my through my life I've had some really cool dance experiences that we'll we'll probably talk about. And then um, I spent about nine years at, at Google with some pretty um, incredible experiences in terms of learnings and exposure. Um, and uh, now I'm at a company called Datastack. I've been here for the last three and a half years, and um, I've gotten to wear lots of hats. Uh, but ultimately, sort of boils up into helping drive a uh, business. Uh, strategy and operations for the company. Awesome. And there's so many reasons I'm excited to get you on the podcast today. You do have an, an amazing backstory. And before we talk about your tech career and going from Google to data stacks, et cetera, if we go back before then, I was reading that you were a world champion in Indian classical dance at age 15, and your career started at a young age, age and led you to conquer all corners of the dance world from being a choreographer on, uh, I think it was So You Think You Can Dance, to a Cirque du Soleil performer. So my first question has to be, how did you go from that background to a career in tech? And ultimately, can you share your origin story? Yeah, you know, to your point, I feel like you sort of have to start at the beginning to yep. to figure out how I wound up where I am. But, um, you know, I, I always start by telling people I never grew up thinking I would be a professional dancer. A lot of people are like, you know, were you dancing at two years old or were you dancing in your mom's stomach? And, you know, none of those things are true. I, um, my parents put my sister and I in a, in a form of Indian classical dance. I was about eight. Um, and really the purpose was a means to connect us to our culture, right? That was just my, both my parents were from India, uh, and came immigrated to the U S. And so it was a way to expose us to where they grew up and to, you know, our, our heritage and our background. And so, um, it really just started as a as a hobby and a connection to where I came from. And then around 12, I, I sort of went from typical classical. So if you think about Indian classical dance, it would be synonymous to ballet. Very yeah. structured, um, right? There's there's a there's a very uh, conservative component to it. Um, and I started to to get into more contemporary. So Bollywood, hip hop, right? Things that um, we're a little bit more uh, flow flowing. Uh, and then I started competing. And actually, the competition that changed my life, you know, so you think and Stork were amazing, but the competition that changed my life was actually called Boogie Woogie, believe it or not. That was the name, <laughs> Boogie Woogie. And, um, and it was through Boogie Woogie that I got to compete all over the world. And then, you know, I, in parallel, was finishing high school and then through college started to, um, you know, choreograph on So You Think and then went into Cirque. And um, after Cirque came back and I had interned at NBC Universal, which is an entertainment company. And so when I came back from Cirque, I realized I still needed to make money and I needed a job. Um, and so I went to all the folks that I interned with and, you know, they gave me an opportunity to run their intern program, which which I took uh, and then started at Google about 10 months after that. So you know, somewhat serendipitous, somewhat a combination of hard work. Um, but I had always had sort of my, my feet in both worlds, the, the, the work world and the dance world. Wow. What an inspiring story. It really is. Absolutely love it. And 
that path would eventually lead you from Google to data stacks. So for people that are listening and hearing about data stacks for the very first time, can you just tell them a little bit more about the company and the kind of problems that you're solving or helping businesses with in tech? Yeah, this is my favorite part. So um, so data stacks is a, it's a real-time AI company. Um, and to, to your point, you know, we're partnering with enterprises and users who are building AI powered applications. But let me let me take a little bit of a step back. Right. So if you think about any application, applications need a few things. Right. They need a highly scalable database that's easy to use and they need an awesome streaming platform system. Um, and Datastax has both of these. So, uh, A, we built something called AstraDB. Um, which is our awesome database as a service. Um, and then we have something called streaming, which is an open source messaging technology, uh, which is built on something called Apache Pulsar. Uh, and recently we acquired a company called Cascada, um, which is a machine learning company. And so when I when I go back to sort of the top of our mandate being a real-time AI company, this sort of brings it all together. And so there's a deep belief that every company should be able to deploy real-time AI you know, you don't have to be a Netflix or an Uber or a Google, um, right? And you should be able to do it without investing a bunch of headcount and a bunch of and a bunch of and a bunch of budget. So we're really excited to deliver, you know, an end to end cloud service that makes real time AI possible for everyone. And before you came on the podcast, I was doing a little research on you, and I quickly learned that data stacks or or brands using data stacks include some pretty big names. I'm talking names such as Verizon, the Home Depot, Priceline. Etc. They're all using data stacks to drive growth. But just to bring that to life for any business leaders listening, can you walk me through how you do this? Maybe walk me through a, a use case if you if you can. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll walk you through a use case. But sometimes, you know, what I often think about is, you know, Neil, as, as you or I are as consumers, right? Yeah. We demand everything in real time. Yeah. And so when you think about the Home Depots or the Verizons or the Price Lines or Starbucks that I'll talk about in a second, you know, those customers also demand everything in real time. So as you're thinking about a package that is going to be delivered to you or an Uber that you're going to order, um, those are things that need to happen instantaneously. And so one of the use cases I really love, because I think that it resonates with folks, is, you know, our partnership with, with Starbucks. So most probably uh, had to order or ordered a drink through the Starbucks app. And as a consumer, it seems seamless. You order the drink, it tells you when it's ready. It's beautiful. Um, but if you think about the technology behind it, right, you expect the, the drink to be ready within minutes. During this process, you expect real-time updates. So Starbucks doesn't just have to do all of these updates on demand. They also need to make sure, is the drink that Neil ordered, do we have all of the ingredients in the store they ordered it at? Um, is there someone there to make the drink? And then, of course, all of the technology along the way to make sure that you know that the drink is ready. And so, you know, when we think about the technology that powers these experiences, um, it's 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 us. And so that, that partnership of Pledge has been pretty phenomenal. And I also read, I think it was last year, that Datastack secured $115 million in financing. So I've got to ask you, tell me more about that and what that means to you as a business. Yeah, you know, I, I guess... Um, the, the word I would use is, you know, validation when, you know, when you're building a company and, and you're on a mission to do something, it's, it's obviously in, in service of your, in, of your customers, but, um, times are interesting. Obviously they were last year they continue to be now with macroeconomic conditions, you know, a, a war obviously. And so, so the world and technology is in a really interesting place. So, you know, I would just say for most of us, uh, it was just validation that, we're building awesome products that practitioners and users love on um, change the trajectory of the enterprises that they work for. And on this Daily Tech podcast, one of the things I love doing is getting people thinking differently about technology, how it impacts our, our lives, our work, and even world in a lot of cases. So I'm curious, I have to ask this considering your background, do you think things like the creative industries are much more closely aligned than, than, uh, than many listening might think? Is there anything you can share around that? Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I, um, I, I often have, you know, studied companies, technologists, leaders, and you just look at someone like Steve Jobs, right? Who yeah. was both so creative and yet built products in such a scalable way. And so when you think about, you know, obviously he's a human being, but when you think about industries, whether they're creative or they're, or they're business, I think that there's 
an absolute opportunity to to not just bring those worlds together, but to bring those minds together, right? And I, I think I very personally used to compartmentalize, right? The left brain of mine that's very analytical and prioritizing it and has to-do lists, like, Mala, don't engage your right brain that's creative at work. That's for the dance floor. Um, and I, I realized that, you know, I was doing myself and doing my work a disservice. And so I think that as companies and as industries and as leaders, I think we can do a better job of, you know, bringing these worlds together because at the end of the day, it creates better products. It creates better messaging. It creates better engagement if, if you know, we're doing it sort of collectively and thinking about the end result. Well, there are a number of issues in the industry at the moment. There is this huge, well-documented uh, tech skill shortage. There's also a huge lack of diversity yeah. in the industry too. I was uh, reading earlier uh, here in the UK, there was, uh, I think it was something like 12% of women are actually working in data science, which just obviously shocked me to the core. So I've got to ask, because there can be people listening from all over the world, and there would be people in different industries, like the creative industry. Maybe they're considering making a move into tech, but they convince themselves that, hey, that world's not for me. What are the biggest lessons you took from dance that, that helped you forge your own career in uh, technology? Because I think it's such an inspirational journey, and I think there'll be a lot of people listening might want to follow in your footsteps. So what would you say those big lessons were? I'll, I'll go through some of my lessons and then, you know, I would love to, to double click, even if it's offline on sort of the comment on upskilling. Cause I think that's such a, a huge area that, you yeah. know, many companies understand that they need to invest in some are, some aren't, but, um, you know, in terms of some of my own personal lessons, you know, one was what I call break the box. Um, you know, we create these dualities in the world. It's just, it's, human nature and it's yeah. so easy to get boxed in you're in the business box you're in the dance box you're in the woman box you're in the woman in tech box right and, and those are all things that matter and those are issues that we need to double click on but you know i uh have built my career and my life to sort of breaking the box and just showing up and making sure that i'm evolving as, as me and forging my path knowing by the way that that changes and evolves and shifts um based on life so you know one is don't let anyone put you in a box break break the box um and 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 make impact doing it <clears throat> excuse me my second um and uh is you know where there's no struggle there's no strength um and my good friend oprah said that so i can't take credit for it but um <laughs> you know i i i think the you know if, if you think about some of the most amazing experiences that you've been through in your life probably came through hardship and struggle and getting to a place deeply that you didn't know you could get to. And so I think often the best things in life come from from struggling and finding strength in that. And I think what comes out of it is, you know, you don't give up, you fail quickly, you iterate when you're not sure what to do. And those are all lessons that apply very much, not just to technology, but, you know, to, to life. Um, and, and then my last one would, um, and sorry, I think you asked for one and here I am on a monologue, but I'll, I'll, no, I'll no, I didn't love it. my third, uh, my, my third in, um, you know, f focus, focus on your audience. And what I, what I mean by that is, you know, when you're a performer, no matter what it is, right, you're a dancer, you're a singer, you have an audience, people come to see a show. And every night, you know, I remember for Cirque, we did eight shows, eight shows a week. And you have to pretend like every night, you know, there's, there is someone new in the audience. You're not pretending. You have to give it the best that you can give it. And so I think that's the same in the work world or in technology. Your customers are your audience, right? For us, it's enterprises and, and developers, and we are here to serve them. That is the heartbeat of your of your purpose and your mission. Um, and don't don't forget it. It can be very easy to make it about you, and it's not. I just love your answer there, especially that line, break the box. I think that's such a powerful line because there should there could be somebody listening in a finance box, a HR or marketing box. Maybe they've been used as a resource in an IT project. It's ignited something in them, and they have this desire and passion for technology. And Business leaders could really make use of that and upskill existing employees. Uh, is there anything you can share around that and, and how businesses could be better or get better at upskilling their existing employees? 
Yeah. And I actually, you know, I spent a little bit of time, one of my last um, areas at, at Google was around thinking about upskilling and yeah. um, really just the fact that by 2030, you know, it was like 70% of the workforce was going to have to be reskilled. I think we can validate my stat from the world, my stat from the World Economic Forum. But, you know, I think the reality is um, companies need to realize that part of that responsibility is on them. Right. And so how are you creating a learning culture within the organizations that you have and making sure that folks are exposed to what they need to be learning? So, you know, to your point, data science or data is actually relevant no matter what world you're in. Even as an HR person or a people person, you need to be looking at data, understanding data, analyzing data, taking insights. And so I think as we look at those sort of core skills that we know we're going to need into the workforce going forward, whether it's, you know, understanding data, whether it's analytical skills, um, making sure that's part of your onboarding process, right? Make sure that as you're hiring folks, if they have a gap in that skill, you're double clicking and bringing them in and you're creating a way to make learning fun, right? A lot of what we learned at, at Google was, yes, you have to assess people. And yes, you have to make sure that, you know, there's, you're actually absorbing the information that you're learning, but how do you do it in a way that can be um, fun, it can be collaborative, um, and people can do it inside and outside work? Uh, there'll be a lot of people listening, uh, getting that light bulb moment at the moment. And then, of course, imposter syndrome kicks in and that person puts a self-imposed feeling of, uh, of what they can achieve in life. So for those people, what advice would you offer to someone listening with a non-tech background? with a non-technical background who wants to explore a career change? What would you say to those, those people listening? I would say do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I can, even even within, um, within my career, my journey, I always took areas or roles that I had, you know, no idea how to do. I, I am not a technical individual. I didn't study computer science. And yet, you know, I was part of a Google Cloud platform, which is extremely technical. And so the way in which I think you do it, one is, first of all, if, if you need to break into an industry, so, you know, I'm, if you're already in, my advice is slightly different. So let's assume you want to break into an industry. One is, you know, use your network. And that can be organic and organic. There's going to be certain people that you know at certain companies. Ask them to coffee, ask them to chat. Um, don't, you know, ping them and say, hey, can you get me a job? Right. Get knowledge from them that will make you um, better in your search. Another thing is you can also LinkedIn is a phenomenal resource, right? You can find people at a company you want to be at, at a role you want to be at, and just message them and say, hey, I know we don't know each other, but I'm really interested in X, Y, Z. Are you open to a virtual coffee? Right. I think we, we forget that at the end of the day, we're all human beings and there's a lot of us that remember that we got to where we are because someone helped us or people helped us. And so, you know, obviously by using your network, start with the people that you know, but it's okay to ask people that you don't know either. And you might get a hit of someone who is willing to give back. 100% the second thing I'd you. say is, yeah, yeah. The second thing I'd say is um, be willing to, to take an opportunity, even if it's not 100% of what you want. Um, you know, I, I took that HR job running an intern program at NBC Universal. I didn't know that I, 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 I didn't, I didn't necessarily, that wasn't the job of my dreams. Um, I still don't know what the job of my dreams is, by the way, Neil, but you know, that's, that's for a different <laughs> conversation, but I took it because it was an opportunity. It was a foot in the door. And I knew that if I did my best and I worked hard, I would get to where I needed to be. And so, you know, I think so many people try and say, okay, I want to get into this industry and I want to only do X. And I'm like, listen, sometimes you're going to have to get your foot in the door and not do X yet. You'll have to do Y and Z, but you will make your way through X. And so be open and adaptable to, you know, getting to your dream job, but knowing that that may be a journey. Um, and then my last one is really simple. Work your ass off. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're going to go into a new space, a new role, a new industry, it means that you have to upskill. And that means you're probably doing it outside of your eight hour day, 10 hour day, 12 hour day, whatever your work day may be. Um, you're probably spending your evenings and your weekends 
understanding and and making that commitment will pay off. Wow, such powerful words and a great message to send out. I'm 100% with you on all fronts. And I cannot thank you enough for coming on here, sharing your insights, your experiences, and, and hopefully it will inspire people listening around the world. But I've got to ask, what's next for you? Where do you go from here? And what's your big focus at Datastax? Is there anything you can share around that too? Yeah, I mean, gosh, I feel like, you know, I'm just getting started. But, um, you know, for for professionally, um, yeah, to your point, I think it's, continuing to be part of this awesome journey at data stacks and and building this this company that um is here to serve our our, our enterprises and our and our and our practitioners um for me personally i'm um i'm helping uh build what we're calling a high velocity motion so trying to get as many folks to use our astro product as possible which has been my own interesting journey to learn how sales cycles work and messaging and um, some of these really cool uh, pieces in terms of just, you know, quite frankly, how to run a business. So um, that's sort of the professional side. And then the personal side, um, you know, I want to, I will I hope to dance more. I uh, dance obviously is such a core part of who I am and it brings me life. And it's actually how I met my, my partner, my husband and I were in a dance together and 13 years ago and, and we're, we, we're still together. And so you know, it's a really big part of my life, but right now it's mostly just dancing in the living room. And, uh, and I think, um, I think it's time I, I start to dance a little bit more, um, just to kind of re-energize my passion. I love that. And we began the podcast talking about your origin story. We'll put you on this path. And as we come full circle now and you look back and reflect on your career, of course, none of us are able to achieve any degree of success without a little help along the way. And that could be someone that we're grateful towards. Maybe they saw something and has invested a bit of time in us. But if I was to ask you this question, is there anyone you're grateful towards who helped you get where you are that we can give a little thank you to out there? Yeah. Um, am I allowed to do too? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, um, I have to start with, you know, my, my, my parents, they are my rock. And honestly, they're just, they're just such cool people. Um, but you know, being, being South Asian, uh, there, there was a, not from them, but just sort of, there was a societal, like you go to college, you become an engineer, you become a doctor, you, you know, there's a certain set of jobs that you're somewhat expected to have. And they never put that on me or my sister, um, and supported me when I had this crazy idea to quit. And by the way, in Stork, I ended up having to, I, I moved to Europe. So, you know, there were a lot of pieces there where. Um, you know, they've supported me, but more importantly, they just show me how strong role models can, you know, be human beings with both strength and love. And so for that, I'm entirely and uh, every part of me is grateful. Um, and then, and then my second one, um, in, in my, my mentor, he's also my, my current boss, but you know, he's, he's my, he's my, my mentor, uh, and, and his name is Chet Kapoor. And, um, you know, people, I'm sure people ask you a lot about how do you get a mentor? How do you find a mentor? And I think it comes down to finding people who you connect with, but more importantly, people you can be vulnerable with, right? And finding someone who can teach you, advise you, but do it authentically and do it when it's hard. So um, he spotted something in me that, you know, maybe I didn't see in myself or I did and it took me time and he's been um, a phenomenal human being. So I'm deeply appreciative to that group of three um and so thanks for thanks for letting me go over on an answer no not at all i think it's a wonderful answer for, for anyone listening that just wants to find out more information about you about data stacks how they can contact your team etc what's the best starting point for everything yeah uh datastacks.com is um is an awesome place to go and then um i'm on linkedin nala tajwani which i'm sure we'll rank and we'll share and feel free to uh, message me and if you have questions or, you know, you're trying to get into tech or you want um, to get a perspective on a path forward, um, I'm a big believer in, you know, helping people get to where they need to be. So feel free to message me. I, I promise I'll message back. I <laughs> uh -huh, love that. And I always say at the end of every episode that technology works best when it brings people together. And at the core of everything you do there, that's quite apparently you're very passionate about that too. And also, 
throughout your inspiring backstory, if we were to zoom in on that, I think there is that willingness to be open, be adaptable, work hard, and do your best to get to where you want to be. And maybe you can land that job of your dreams. And it's just it's inspirational story that you've got there i'd love to stay in touch with you maybe we talk about the job of your dreams in our next conversation but uh, thanks for sharing your story with me today mom that sounds awesome thank you so much Neil. i appreciate um i appreciate the conversation outside of our conversation i was reading that fluidity agility passion precision and creativity are core tenets of how that anyone can harness from their own lives to start new careers and it was marla that uh said that and those words really struck a call with me along with the willingness to be open adaptable work hard do your best and get to where you want to be and yes that might mean doing a few roles you don't enjoy too much but they're just stepping stones to get to your ultimate goal and hopefully those words have inspired you today and marla did urge you to connect on linkedin she'll help if she can and if you want me to help you need a few words of encouragement and i'm not sure about wisdom but i'll certainly give you encouragement Message me directly, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, at Neil C. Hughes. Hopefully these words today will inspire you, but I would love to hear about your story if they have. So please keep those messages coming in. I'll be back again tomorrow with another guest, but a big thank you for joining me today. And until next time, don't be a stranger. (laughs) 